Here's an example of question 8 from chapter 9. It's a hypothesis test on two population proportion. We're looking for a, the alternative hypothesis being greater than, so this is a one-tailed test, an upper tail. So let's begin to input the given information into an R script and we'll be able to do some calculations. We'll note for reference that uh, the alpha level is 0 0.002. The number of successes in the first sample is 52 as stated in the problem and the size of that sample is 294. That means that we can calculate the proportion of successes in that first sample it's going to be the number of successes in that first sample divided by the size of the sample. We can also then calculate what uh, the probability of failure is going to be. The proportion of the failures is going to be uh, q hat 1, which is going to be 1 minus p hat 1. Now we're going to do the same information for the, for the second sample. So as, you know, as we note in the problem, the number of successes in the sample, second sample was 47. The sample size was 520, and so therefore the proportion uh, ooh, of those uh, is going to be R2 divided by N2, the number of successes divided by the size of the sample. And then, of course, the uh, <coughs> proportion of the failures is going to be uh, 1 minus the p hat 2. Now to find the, the test statistic we need to look at the three distribution diagram. Here I'm looking at, the, at our summary of hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. Remember we're looking at the population. In this case we had two populations. We took a sample from each of those populations. We then calculated the, uh, the difference in those two populations. That's going to be our sample statistic. We looked at, uh, somebody must have looked at the assumptions that help to assure that that distribution of sample statistics is going to be normally distributed. And then we, we want to find the sample statistic, which is going to be a z-value in this case, and it's going to be the sample statistic, that is the difference between our two sample proportions minus the population parameter which is going to come from the null hypothesis and that's going to be zero because p1 minus p2 is the null hypothesis and that's that value is supposed to be zero that's the null hypothesis we need to know the standard deviation of the distribution of this sample statistic so let's uh, scroll down here to find what that is. Since we're doing a, a two population proportion and we're doing a hypothesis test, we will use this pooled this pooled standard deviation for the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample statistic. Phew, that was a lot of talking, but let's go ahead and do that calculation. So we want to, to build that pooled um, the, we want to build the p bar. <laughs> the. So what we're going to do is count up the total number of successes in both in both populations, the sum of the successes from the two populations, divided by uh, of the two samples, divided by the sum of the two samples. Okay, so we're finding the proportion of successes in all of the sampling that we did. That's a, a a pooled p bar. So q bar of course will be calculated as 1 minus p bar. That standard deviation that we're looking for can now be calculated. So SD will be the square root of, of the p bar my, uh, times q bar divided by n1 plus p bar minus q bar divided by n2. So now we've got that standard deviation. I'd like to name something called p hat d for the difference in the p hat, so that'll be p hat 1 minus the p hat 2. That's the statistic that we're looking at, 
the distribution of those that's uh, normally distributed with the standard deviation of this SD that we have. So therefore we can now calculate the Z value. Now what that Z value is going to be is the sample statistic. That's the, the P hat D, the difference in the P hats, minus the population parameter, which is going to be zero in this ca case because the null hypothesis says that the population parameter of the, the the proportion of the first population minus the proportion of the second population is equal to zero. And so it's just going to be p hat d on the top divided by sd. So that is our test statistic. Let's just ask for that to be uh, printed out for us. Let's run our script. Ooh, session's timed out. Hang on. Okay, so we've reloaded, we execute our script, and there is our test statistic. We'll copy that and paste it in over here and submit, see how we're doing. And we've got that part of the question right. So now we've got to do a p-value. Now look at some things just real quickly. We're doing an upper tail test that p-value is going to depend that you'll calculate it differently if you're doing a lower-tailed test or if you're doing a two-tailed test or if you're doing an upper-tailed test. So let's just look real quickly at where things fit. In our case, we're doing an upper-tailed test. Our test statistic ended up in the right-hand side here and it ended up being positive down here in the, in the Z distribution. So we're looking for that area the p-value, the area above our test statistic. So we'll calculate that in the following way. If we were doing a lower tail test, we'd just do p-norm of t because that would be the area below t. In this case, p-norm of t still tells us the area below t, but we want the area above t. So we'll look at 1 minus the p-norm of t. Oops, I don't want to call this Z. This is my p-value. And then I want to be able to print out that p-value. So let's execute that script. Okay, I had a, an error there. It's not p-norm of t, it's p-norm of z. We had calculated that z-value. So let's uh, execute that script. And there is our, our p-value. It's really a relatively small value, but we'll copy that and paste it over into our answer. Okay, copying that p-value over, plugging it in here and checking, you'll notice that we've got those two right. Okay, now let's look at the situation. There's our p-value. Notice that it's quite a bit lower than the alpha value. So it's l so uh, the p-value is less than the alpha value. When the p-value is low, the null hypothesis must go. We reject the null hypothesis. Uh, and so now there, the sample data supports the claim that the first population proportion is in fact greater than the second population proportion. So there we go. Okay. Now, let me see if we can regenerate a... Uh, now an awful lot determ mattered here whether we are doing an upper-tailed test, a lower-tailed test, or a two-tailed test. All of those things, the getting up to the point that we calculated the test statistic, it doesn't, there's no difference. But when you get to, to finding the p-value, the p-value is calculated different in each one of those cases. We are doing an upper-tailed test here. Okay, hope that helps.